Velo Solar Tech. Uh, I mean, it's in the name of the channel. So today we're going to be talking about everything tech related when it comes to how to build a solar e-bike. What components you need and how to connect everything. So the first part is going to be about the individual components and options. And the second part is going to be a demonstration and an explanation. I mean, I have a question for you. Can you charge and discharge a battery at the same time? And the answer to that is no, you can't. An old Mercedes. It's not mine. Brabus. Brabus. That, that means good fun in Swedish. Here are the new panels. Quite a lot wider than the ones I have on and way shorter. So I have to do some modification back here to make it fit. Good thing is it will probably help a lot with the shadowing of the trailers panels. Okay, uh, let's talk batteries for a while. The first thing you need to do is to check if you can charge your battery with solar. And the easiest way to do this is to take your regular wall charger, plug it in and start your bike. If your bike turns on and everything is functioning as normal, then you're good to go. If you have uh, like Bosch or Shimano or Bros, one of those systems, Yamaha, then they are not made for this. You cannot solar charge a bike like that. There is a hack with Bosch, but I feel it's not in my place to tell you how to do that. You have to figure that out for yourself. Your battery has something called a battery management system. It does a couple of things, but that's not important right now. What's important to know is if it has a common charge or discharge port. That means the battery can be charged and discharged through the same connector. Most batteries have two separate connectors, one for charging and one for discharging. But in reality, they go to the same place on the BMS inside the battery. This is my battery. And my battery has a common charge and discharge port. Even though you see three connectors there, that's because all of them are in parallel. It's not pretty, I know, but it's functional. I built this battery myself, so inside here is a 41 amp power 36 volt battery. So one of those connectors goes to the bike. Second connector goes to the DC-DC converter I have. I will show the, you that later. And the third one goes to the solar panels. So they are all connected in parallel. There is nothing special about this. It's just three connectors on the same cable that goes into the battery. Very simple, really. Battery size is very important as well. Uh, it decides, determines how big solar array you can use, how much you can charge it with. So the bigger it is, the more power it can take and deliver. So for an example, my battery is big. It can handle 20 amps of charge safely. And if you do have regenerative braking also, you have to remember that produces a lot of energy. There are motors out there that can produce about 1000 watts when you're braking. My motor do about five to 600. Five to 600 together with the solar could mean eight, 900 watts of charging. And that's not okay for a small battery. You will, probably, you will probably break your BMS if you do that. But if you don't have regenerative braking, you only have to think about sizing your solar array so you don't overstep the charge limit of the BMS. So this is an MPPT Solar Boost Charge Controller. And you should always use boost. It's much better to take a low voltage and boost it up to the correct charge voltage. It takes all the variables of solar energy and converts it into a specific and optimized charging profile for the lithium battery. You can connect as many as you want in parallel. So I have two because I have two separate solar arrays. There's a Chinese version out on the market right now. That seems to be quite popular. I will put up a picture of it here. The good thing with this one is it's programmable. You can buy one and use on whatever battery you have. 
MPPT stands for multi-point power tracking. That's an algorithm that optimizes the solar energy in the best possible way. These guys have 98% efficiency, which is really, really good, and they are very, very fast. So if the sun is hiding behind a cloud and suddenly appears, they immediately start to charge the battery again. They are super expensive, too expensive in my opinion, but they are the best. I have bought them with my own money. I'm not sponsored by anyone. Everything you see in my videos is bought and paid for by me. This thing is not a necessity, but it's a fun thing to have. It's a power analyzer. I think you will, if you look for this on, online, it's called watt meter or power analyzer. So what I do, I put this behind, between the battery and the charge controllers, and I can do a readout on this to see exactly what the panels are producing at the moment. And then I can also see how much power in general during a day I've collected. So it's a fun thing to have, but it's not necessary. This is also not absolutely necessary, but it's a good thing to have. It's a DC-DC converter, so it takes 20 to 60 volts in and it puts out 12 volts. So I connect that directly to my battery through this port. This one goes to the lights, so I power my lights also with the same DC-DC converter. And then I just connect it to a socket, 12 volt cigarette socket. And then I have a generic 12 volt car charger. With this I can charge my phone and drone and everything I own in a bag on the trike. It's very simple. So this next bit I'm gonna be doing outside. It's very late, so we won't see any major power happenings here, but, and it's pretty cloudy, but I'm gonna try to demonstrate anyway, exactly how I connect everything. What you're looking at here is the solar panel. And behind the solar panel here, I have the charge controller. It's blinking, it means it's charging. So that is connected. So now it's connected directly to the power analyzer. Here you can see that I'm charging with 80 watts this late in the day and with some clouds in the sky. That's okay. The upper right corner, you can tell how many amps you charge with. Upper left corner shows the voltage. And we are charging a power bank at the same time. So you can see there's no magic to connecting a solar system together. It's very easy really. So now back to the original question asked in the beginning. Can you charge and discharge a battery at the same time? And the simple answer to that is no, you can't. A battery can either be charged or discharged. There's nothing in between. So what actually happens when you solar charge your e-bike is this. Say for an example, the motor is pulling 500 watts and the solar is providing, for this example, 250 watts. So the solar panel is providing 250 watts and the battery is providing the rest, also 250 watts. In the second example, let's say the panels are not producing anything. It's behind a cloud or a building or whatever. Then the battery obviously is providing all of those 500 watts to the motor. Third example, the motor is not active. The solar panels are producing 250 watts. Then it will charge the battery. So it's either or charging or discharging. The power from the solar panels does not need to be stored first in the battery before it's being used. I get a lot of questions about if it's harmful for the battery to be charged and discharged all the time. And I say, no, it's not. But because what happens, you're keeping the battery at a pretty nice level all the time. Let's say you are at 80% state of charge. The motor is using power and the solar is providing power. And you're taking stress out of the battery because the solar is actually helping the battery. So it's a good thing to have solar on an e-bike.